My name is Zach Medell and I live in Okotoks. When I needed care, Alberta Health Services was there for me. When I was 10 years old, I contracted a staph infection and because of that, I had to have my fingers and legs amputated in hospital. We were out at my cabin in Little Bow on a weekend and I started feeling like I had flu-like symptoms. And the next day, I, my lips had started turning blue, so we decided I needed to get into a hospital as soon as possible. Calgary sent down an ambulance to come and pick me up. Stars couldn't fly that night because there was a blizzard going on, so they had to drive down. They did the best job they could, came down, picked me up, and brought me straight to the children's. I guess the first time I realized it was when I could see my fingers had started turning black and shriveling up, and I'd kind of been told that they wouldn't be able to recover, so they would amputate them. And my legs had been amputated very early on, but because of all the nerves and everything still there, I didn't realize it for the first probably month, month and a half. Like I thought they were still there, they felt like they were there just because of nerve impulses. It was different just knowing that my life was going to be changed and I'd have to figure out how to do other things and my life wouldn't be a normal life, but still had to keep a positive attitude. Initially they were doing dressing changes every two or three days I think just to make sure my wounds were clean and had me hooked up to all kinds of different machines early on. I was on life support for the first few weeks in ICU. Uh, one of the anesthetists who was, even if he was off for a weekend or something, he'd always let us know that we could give him a call if anything went wrong and he'd be there as quickly as possible. Uh, they always tried to make sure that I was entertained in some way and that I could reach them if I needed to just so I wasn't, I had something to do and they were really friendly people. They'd have people come in and sing for me. There was one janitor who would make a special effort to come into my room every day, I think, and just to come see how I was doing. He was a really friendly guy and just, he'd sit in there and as he's mopping, he's dancing with his mop, doing the tango, and just, that was one of my, another highlight of my hospital stay, just having people like that trying to cheer me up and keep kind of a bright environment for me. It was a long process to get from being a patient in the hospital to getting on with life and trying to get back into sports. So initially I started out with sledge hockey, and moved on to basketball and played that for three or four years. And then that's when I discovered rugby about two years ago now. A year and a half ago in November, I was going in for a fairly uneventful surgery. We didn't think anything interesting would happen. They were just removing an IVAD device from my chest. And while they, uh, as soon as they started the surgery, my heart stopped, so they performed CPR for 10 minutes before they could get it running again. And because of the great job they did, three weeks later I was in Montreal playing rugby at a national training camp. I was chosen for the Olympics in my first wheelchair rugby tournament. When I won the silver medal, it was a great experience just knowing that we had one. But the most kind of emotional moment for me was that right before the first game, just waiting in the tunnel to come out into the stadium and then just the crowd roaring as we rolled out. When I was in the hospital, I was fairly optimistic throughout the whole event. I never really thought of, I never wanted to think about the negative side really or what could go wrong. I just tried to always look on the bright side and look forward to future events that would change my life. And all the doctors and staff there went way above and beyond their expectations. 